Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021, more commonly known as Photo Raw. And I'm talking about brush masking because when I first started using it, I struggled a little bit trying to figure out how masking worked. But it's actually quite easy and of course it's very powerful. So there's a lot of different components to masking, but I'm just gonna be talking about brush masking and I'm gonna demonstrate that using the effects tab and adding some filters to a, a, an example photo and then like a real photo. So um, basically masking is all about brushing in effects and controlling where they go. So it's basically you controlling where changes you make to the photo apply in the photo using the masking brush. Masking, you can think of it as painting. You're painting in whatever edits you're making and you're applying them to specific parts of the photo so that you have control over how it looks. The difference between masking and not masking is if you're not masking and you add an effect, it covers the entire photo. Sometimes you don't want that. You just wanna apply it to a certain specific part of a photo. That's where masking comes in. So let me show you. Here's a sample, just a black sheet of paper, and I'm in the effects tab. I'm gonna add the texture filter just because it's really easy to see this. And I'm gonna go down here to light text number two. And I gotta be honest, like the texture filter in on one photo raw is really cool. I love it. So um, if you wanna get into masking, uh, you can do two, one of two things. Number one, if you click on this, you can see it says show and hide masking options. You can click on that and across the top, you will see a masking menu. In the top left, the very furthest left one is called the masking brush. That's what we're talking about here. Now, if I hide that again, um, you can also get to that hitting the B key on your keyboard. So, so if I was back here and wanted to get to that masking brush, I could just hit B and there it is. So again, we're focused on this top left one, which is the masking brush. Um, you've got a few options here and I'm not gonna dive into deep, deep detail about all this because it really is several videos. But the first thing to note is you have various shapes. I'm really just gonna focus on this circular shape. You have two modes, you can paint in or paint out. I'll talk about that in a minute. You have a size. Um, you can just hover your mouse over where it says size. If you drag it to the right, it gets big. If you drag it to the left, it gets smaller. You can also use the bracket key on your keyboard. To the right will increase the size, to the left will decrease the size. By the way, if you're in paint out and you wanna change it to paint in, notice um, this little circle that I'm moving around which represents my masking brush. Notice there's a minus sign, so that's painting out. That's removing it, hence the minus sign. If you hold down the shift key and hit X, it'll change it to paint in, as you see. And by the way, there's now a plus sign there. So you can shift X to, to flip back and forth between paint in and paint out. Okay, so size, we talked about that. Feathering is, if you notice, the inner circle is changing size, right? And the outer circle does not change. Feathering is basically increasing or decreasing the the what I call the gradient zone. It's basically where the fall off happens. In that center circle, you get 100% of the um, application. And from between that uh, first circle and the outer circle, it falls off. And the feathering is basically how much of a transitional zone do you want to have? Opacity, as the name implies, is um, you're just setting the opacity, like how much is showing through. Flow, on the other hand, is basically the rate at which your painting is being applied. And then angle allows you to in, uh, increase or decrease the angle. That's not gonna matter with a circle. So when you apply a texture or a filter, really, it's applying across the entire thing. Now, I'm gonna open this masking menu here, and you will see you've got a few things. Again, I'm not gonna go deep on all these, but I wanna talk about this area. If you notice, when you open it, there's this white square here. The thing to remember with masking is white reveals and black conceals. What that means is anywhere that's white on your mask, and by the way, you can click view to view mask, and that means when it's all white, that means the effect, which is that texture, is being revealed. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. The texture is being revealed across the entire photo. I just hit the view uh, button and I hit it again to turn that off. So it's entirely white because that texture is being applied or revealed across the entire photo at this moment. You can reset, copy, you can get into luminosity mask as well. We're not gonna do that, but you can also invert. So if I click invert, you'll notice it changes to black. Now, 
you're not seeing the texture in this because black conceals, which means when I've hit invert, which is the opposite of the white, instead of revealing with white the entire texture across the photo, it is now concealing because it's black. So it's the opposite. It's just a flip-flop. So you can just hit invert, and as you go back and forth, there's the texture, and it's white. White reveals. If I click invert again, the texture is gone. Black conceals, and this is black. So that's just something to keep in mind. Here's the other thing that may confuse you is paint in or paint out is only going to work if you have the proper invert or non-invert of the filter being added. So what I mean by that is, let me invert that again. If I have the entire texture applied, and then I come up here and say, I want to paint in. Well, when I start painting, hey, Jim, nothing's happening. What's going on? Well, the thing that's going on is I'm trying to paint in the effect, but this is white. The effect is already revealed entirely across the entire photo. There's nothing to paint in. It's already there. Conversely, if I hit invert and I do a shift X and say I want to paint out, hey, I want to erase that texture. If I start erasing, well, there's nothing to erase. And consequently, over here, my masking preview win window is completely black. Black conceals. There's nothing to paint out because it's concealed. So you can do it one of two ways. You can have a white mask revealing the entire texture and then paint it out. Or if you flop that around, you can conceal the entire thing and then you would want to say paint in. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to start by painting in. And as you see, as I start moving my mouse across the photo, you can see that I've painted in the texture and it becomes white. I can click view and you can see I missed a couple of spots. I can come here and tidy that up. I missed the corners and I hit view again to go back. And now I've got the entire texture applied. So that's how that works. Now the opacity and the flow and those sort of things will come into play if you're trying to soften up what you're doing. In other words, let me hit uh, reset and I'm going to hit invert again. And I'm going to paint in, but I'm going to lower the opacity. So I'm going to drop that to 35, 40. There we go. Now, see how it's not fully white? I'm painting it in as a lower, at a lower opacity. So in order to get more of that, you need to keep going over it and over it and over it until you build up to basically what would be 100% opacity. Now, if you know you want the whole thing to apply, just use 100% opacity, paint over it, and you know I'm just kind of going fast here. I'm trying to get everything, um, but there you go. You can just kind of see how that works, and if you click View, oops, you see it's not fully uh, full opacity there. Now it is. I can hit View, and there we go. I've got 100% of that applied. So that's basically how opacity works. It allows you to paint up over time, and then flow is the rate at which that painting in occurs. 100 flow is it'll occur rapidly. Zero flow, or, or I shouldn't say zero, but a really low flow like 10 or something is going to paint it in much more slowly. Now I'm going to go get a, a real photo and show you how I would edit a photo using the brush mask for filters. Okay, here's a sunset I took along the Oregon coast, and I haven't done anything on the develop tab. I recommend doing that. I did a video about raw develop or developing your raw files. You might want to check that out if it's not something you're familiar with. If you're inter interested in the effects, of course, uh, once you finish on the develop tab, which I would normally do first, I'm skipping it here just to be fast. But for effects, I'm going to go get dynamic contrast, which is a really great contrast filter here in on one. And all I'm going to do is move these contrast uh, small, medium, and large just to kind of get to where I like the photo. And I've got to look at my notes to see kind of what I did, but something about like that and something about like that. I'm just creating contrast in the photo. And of course, if I turn it off, you can see there it is before and there it is after. Here's where masking comes in. I really like what this contrast, this dynamic contrast filter, which is great by the way, what it does to the rocks um, and the sand. But let me turn that off. If you look at the sky, I personally prefer a much smoother sky. I like the sky the way it is. I don't want the dynamic contrast on the sky, but when I turn it back on and show you, I do want it on the rocks. Hey, guess what? This is where masking comes in. So just click on that, and I'm just going to say invert because I prefer to paint in personal preference. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to leave opacity at a hundred and I'm just going to increase the size of that. And I'm in completely a black mask, which means um, it's concealed and I'm in paint in. So I'm going to paint it in 
where it's been concealed. In other words, I'm going to start revealing the dynamic contrast filter in the areas where I paint. So I'm doing that painting now. And as you can see, I'm just kind of going along the bottom of the photo where I get the sand and where I get some of these rocks in the foreground and the people as well. That way, that crunchy kind of dynamic contrast effect does not apply to my smooth, soft sky, which I love. So um, you can see my mask window over there. And if I click on view, you can see what I've done. I've revealed dynamic contrast where it's white, which is the bottom part of the photo, the foreground, basically, the rocks and the sand and the people. And I've continued to keep it concealed in the sky because I don't want any dynamic contrast in the sky. I like that smooth kind of silky sky and that one's kind of smooth. And so I'm happy with it like that. So that's how masking works, but I'm not finished. I now want to go do some color work and I'm going to mask in that selectively as well. So I click on add filter and I'm going to get color adjustment and that's going to bring me over here and I'm going to get this orange uh, filter here uh, and I'm going to take the hue down to like a negative 10 or 11 and it's me just playing with the what the orange looks like. I need to look at my notes here and I'm going to take the saturation level up to like 15 or 20 something like that and so there you go now if I turn this off if you look at the center of the photo um, where the sun is you can see it most dominantly there there it is with the filter applied and there it is without but you may notice it also hits some other areas of the photo. And hey, Jim doesn't really want it hitting other areas of the photo, so I'm gonna say plus. I'm gonna do invert because I just prefer to paint in. That's kind of how I've always done it. You can paint out if you like. In this case, um, I'm in paint in mode, so because my uh, brush is there already, and it's black on the masking window, which means it's concealed. So I'm gonna paint this in where I want it to paint in, which is basically just right around here in the center of the photo just to give a little bit of that sense of that sun kind of breaking through. And now if you look at my um, mask, I need to touch up that spot. You can see what I've done. But here's the thing. I kind of like it in a little bit other areas, but not as strong. And so that's where opacity comes in. So I'm going to take the opacity down to something like 50. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint it in just kind of across some of this sky at a lower opacity and a little bit over there and a little bit there on the sand where the light may be hitting that. It's really light and you may not even be able to tell, but if I click on view to show you the mask, you can kind of see, and by the way, you can come in here and do a little more painting even when the masking window is being displayed. So um, there you go. I've basically got some different opacity masks. Black is completely concealing. So this orange is not touching anything um, that's black. Now remember, this mask is for this filter, the color adjustment. My dynamic contrast mask looks different because that was done on a different filter. So that's one of the great things about On One. You can separate the masks by the filter. But I've got 100% opacity here where it's white, and then um, a little bit less opacity there where it's light gray, and then where it's dark gray, a really low opacity, and then where it's black, of course, there's none at all. So what I've done is I've basically painted in that orange selectively into my image to get the image that I want. So there it is before any of that is applied, and there it is after. That's how masking works. It's quite simple, it's incredibly powerful, and if you're not familiar with it, um, I hope that you spend some time kind of playing around with it. There's a lot of different masking you can do. There's an AI quick mask, which you can find right up here. There's also a masking bug. I'll get into those in future videos, but if you have other questions or other masking related topics you want me to cover, I'm kind of working my way through on one, as I've said in several videos now. I'm liking the product. I'm thinking of it as a replacement for my Lightroom catalog. Um, I'm still going to use the other products I talk about frequently because I love them. Nothing's changed on that front, just to be clear. Um, this is looking like a replacement for me uh, for Lightroom, possibly. I'm, I'm evaluating this and some other products, but that's how the brush masking works. Very powerful, very easy, but it gives you a, a really amazing control over your photos. And that's what I covered in this video, my friends. I hope it helps. I hope it uh, provides some insight or some answers to any questions you may have about brush masking in On One Photo Raw. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. You guys take care of yourselves out there. Stay safe and adios.